find a jam Pull me out on a tight spot Let me listen Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Eating to the bone Rallying for a cause Anglicans on the move right now Hey, the Anglican voice, and I don't know if Jesus is the choice. You better come show and rejoice if you know God coming for the girls and the boys. It doesn't matter what time Jesus calls you after. What matters is as long as you answer. I will shake up his mind to get some of that brand new wine. Anglicans on the move right now. Anglicans on the move right now. Eden to the call, rallying for a cause. Anglicans on the move right now Good evening to you all our listeners Whether you are listening on I-95.5 FM The Anglican Outlook TV on YouTube Or the Anglican Outlook on Facebook Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Anglican Voice This program is brought to you by the Incorporated Trustees of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. I am your host this evening. I am Reverend Mark Haynes, and I'm ably assisted and accompanied by a good friend of mine, Cyprian Ransom. Good evening to you, my brother. Hi, good evening, Mark, and good evening, listeners. Thank you for joining us on the Anacon Voice tonight. I'm so elated and happy to be part of this panel of discussion again tonight, and um, I hope it is very informative for, for everyone listening. But I look forward to really hosting with you, Mark. And I thank God for the opportunity to host with you as well. And tonight we have a great panel. We have some champions with us tonight. But before we get into that, let's connect with the ultimate champion. And I, Cyprian, I'll ask you to open us up with a word of prayer. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, we want to give you thanks and praise, and we worship you up high, Lord, and we want to give you, dear Father, all the honor and glory. Father, we ask that you bless our listeners, you bless our guests in the studio. Lord, we ask for your divine intervention and help us to lead our discussion into um, fruitfulness. We pray, dear Father, that the information that we, we discuss this afternoon is informative, and also we learn a lot as well. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, Cyprian, we have three, three groups of individuals who are ready to talk to us about their schools, who are ready to talk to us about the hard work. And we know we, this evening we talk in pan. So pan, you know, we're in pan season right now. You understand, and today we have uh, we have three schools. We have with us is today um, Bishop's Anstey High School, Bishop Anstey High School in Port Spain. Miss Martin, no, no both me. I know I was getting both enough for saying the S I D. So I'm fixing that one time, one time. So we have Bishop Anstey, Port of Spain, and we have Miss Tamara Martin representing us for Bishop Anstey. Um, in the part in the church of Cova Anglican Primary School, that's Cova Anglican Primary School. We have Jeros Keats and we have Asha Alexis, and then we also have Bishop Anstey Trinity College East and Sixth Form. We have Sydney Nichols, we have Tanya Hart, and we have Elon Thomas. Wow, that's a big panel, right, Cyprian? Yes, a definitely big panel. And a panel of champions, I must say. You know, for you to reach the finals, you know, it is really a big achievement from all the primary schools across Trinidad and Tobago. And, yeah. you know, I really want to applaud you guys on your efforts and your, you know, you, know, you all just, you know, from your heart playing the joy of the, 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 um, the rhythm of the pan. So I really want to thank God for giving you all that talent of being able to play the national instrument and you all just being successful as well. 
Yes. So my first question, we well, we chatted with Bishop and Steve Paul has been first. Mr. Mara, tell us. Hi. The Bishop normally known for but um academics. I didn't know Bishop was a big pan school. Tell me about tell me a little bit about your DJ. Well, firstly, good evening to the listeners, Reverend Haynes. Thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> your co-host and the panel, good evening. Um, Bishop Ansi actually is known for academics and all-round holistic development. We have always been a school involved in the arts, in particular music. We have also been a school heavily invested in sport as well. Um, we are known for a vibrant choir and not so much our pan side until recently. So let me just backtrack a little bit. In 2019, after about a 16-year hiatus from, from the Junior Panorama competition, we decided to re-enter. Um, at, that, at that point in time, um, the challenge was um, gathering the, the necessary equipment to perform, but we felt determined that we can do it because years prior to that, we would have been very, very extensively known for performances in choir. For example, junior um, music festival, <coughs> excuse me, performances at the president's house. We're very public about our choir and we have been all over in terms of representation. But um, 16 years prior to that, we would have joined up with our brother's school and we decided to do it again in 2019. <clears throat> 2019, we decided to do Nyla Blackman's um, Iron Man. And um, we, we made it to the finals and we placed third in that year. With the excitement of it, we decided to, to, um, to enter again in 2020, playing Earth and Alves um, Soka Global. And we also made it to the finals where that year we placed fifth. Now that we have um, entered into the pandemic right after that, everything had to shut down, unfortunately. So we started with a clean slate in 2022, 2023. Most of our students would have graduated, gone off to college, did not come back for sixth form. So we started with a fresh band. <clears throat> um, I have never heard these girls play before. In September would have been the, the onset of face-to-face school as we knew it from before um, pre-pandemic times. So girls would have said, yes, we want to play for Junior Panorama, but we, we had no clue as to what type of caliber of playing we would have been getting, but we were determined to enter because we think it was a necessary part of our culture to be taking part in every year. This year we chose to do, <clears throat> to pay homage to the Lord Explainer we, ch we chose Lorraine because of his recent passing, so we wanted to celebrate him posthumously. We also, if you listen to our panor panorama arrangement, we also paid a, a little homage to the, the Black Stalin as well. So we thought that to strike that balance between our girls playing what we would quote-unquote call young people's songs, as well as having them to appreciate the more vintage type songs and the melodious type music that they will get from the more vintage type songs. Wow. Thank you very much, um, Miss Tamara Martin, for that wonderful, you know, explanation about, you know, the how, how Bishop's Anstey is not only a school of academics, but of, I would say, a, cultur a culturally um, infused and well intertwined school. Uh, my question to you is in terms of, you know, this year's rendition on the pan, right? Um, how was the, the, the reception from the students when you all first started to practice and after practice you all, you know, um from each from the preliminary rounds to the the semifinals and then to the final, how was the reception from the students playing the pan? and from the students who are in the school listening to it. Just want some feedback on that. Well, to be quite honest, um, when I first told the girls the song choice, 
a lot of students did not know um who explainer was and a lot of students would not have heard the song before so i had to sensitize them and i had to we created a whatsapp group and i had to share the youtube video and we discussed it we discussed calypso we discussed who he was we discussed his contribution to the calypso arena and um i also had an an all out sensitization in school as well so what i did is during the lunch times i would play the song over the um the intercom for the entire school to hear we would talk about it in assemblies um when wherever we're putting together this panorama production we tend to in, in, involve vapor as a whole so we in we in we get our art, art girls involved our art teachers were very instrumental in decorating and getting the moko chumbies and the damn rains on stage um so the girls at first most of them a handful of them knew the song but most of them did not so what we did is we were very instrumental in making sure that they that they connect with the song by the time we played for prelims the entire school knew the song the entire school were able to sing along at the chorus lines when we were performing and um i think it, it was an important part to have that whole school involvement and for that we were extremely successful with so the girls would have started off not necessarily knowing much about explainer but by the time we played that final note in uh, the panorama finals on the sunday the 22nd of january every student who was involved every student who was in that stand singing knew about him in some form or fashion because i think it's really important for us to honor our icons unfortunately sometimes we do this after they have passed but nonetheless we do it anyway and i think the overall um the overall development of children is not just the curriculum it's also the hidden curriculum so we may not have placed first that day but I think we placed first in a lot of hearts that day. And I think what the children took away on that day was very invaluable. I think participating in a national junior panorama like this is very, very important um, for students because we have to work as a team. We have to expose our students to our culture. And once we can achieve this, I think our country would be in good hands. Ms. Martin, and you said two things there that I want to highlight. One, um, I credit you all for being brave and not going with the popular choice of the 2022-2023 um, repertoire or availability of music. Um, and you mentioned something very good there in terms of honoring persons who are alive. And I'd like to give you, take this opportunity, if you can share the name of your arranger for this year, um, you know, give them some, give him or her some credits and in relation to, you know, if you can identify who it is and how it was the experience working with this individual. All right. So our arranger has been the same arranger consistently since our return to the Junior Panorama in 2019. I opted to choose with, um, to work with Mr. Barry Manet. Mr. Manet would have come from a lineage, if you know the Manet's last name, of Pan Pioneers. Um, I also went to University of the West Indies with him and I played, um, we were involved in a couple of Psalms, so I would have had some experience with him as a player as well. <clears throat> Now, um, we have worked with Mr. Manet. Mr. Manet works very, very, very well with the girls. He is, or even though I, as I mentioned earlier, um, that this was a new batch of girls, he always meshes so well with, with our school culture when he comes. And what I also like about Mr. Manet is, if you pay attention to this particular panorama this year, the season was extremely short. There was the sign up for the season. Um, the deadline to sign up, I think, was November 31st. 
And if you if if you're checking school calendars, this is perilously close to the end of school because school school would have closed um in the middle of December for the for the Christmas vacation. And then preliminary round would have been between the 5th and the 19th of January. So if you wrap your mind around that particular time frame, the, the season and the time to prepare these children was extremely short. Working with Mr. Manet, what I like about him is <clears throat> Mr. Manet scores his music. So when he scores his music, we can tag team like this. He can score, he can email it to me. I can teach the girls during the day because they see me all the time. And then when he comes in the afternoon, he can move forward. Anything besides this to me would have been total madness, waiting for somebody to pull notes out of their heads and spending long, long hours after school into the night trying to finish the tune. So Mr. Manat and I have had a really good working relationship for the past few years. Um, and I, I intend to continue with him. Um, he, he also is extremely involved. I think by extension, he is, um, well, I don't know if you know, we, we, call, we call girls who graduate from our school hilarious. And he has had many family members pass through the school. So I think by extension, he is some sort of hilarious. And um, he has meshed really, really well with the girls. Amazing, amazing. Um, as you mentioned, hilarious. Can you tell us or, you know, share with us how has their support over the years or even this year um helped the school you know reach the finals because of course it wouldn't just be the arranger the students playing and the teachers alone you must have some help from the, the hilarious as you call them the alumni of the school so share with us how have they helped you yeah now i mean i i am pretty sure the other members when they when they chat they will attest to how very expensive and costly taking part in Junior Panorama is. <clears throat> and the support has been pouring in from our Hilarion sisters. So I'll give an example. In 2019, when I approached my principal and I said, Miss, I would like to do this. And she said, let us do it. Now, the principal at the time was Miss Shulland. And Miss Shulland, um was one of the persons who was instrumental in sewing all of our uniforms at night. And she was also a big part of um, designing our Bars of Steel logo because we have a logo now. Um, our Hilarion um, alumni has been supporting us financially because we have to pay for many things, transportation, we have to pay for tents, we have to pay for in instruments, we have to pay... We have to pay for, for uniforms. Everything is a cost. And um, I must say, this year, the Hilarion support was humongous. We won the prize for the most school support at the event. And if, um, if persons were looking at the stands, <clears throat> there was a sea of red. There were, there were Hilarions with walking sticks that came out. There were hilarians who were actually active in school at the moment. There were past pupil hilarians. There was a wide range of ages of hilarians coming out to support um, our girls on that Sunday. Something that we are extremely proud and grateful for. So we really hope that we look forward to 2024. We regroup. We clean up the slates. We placed seventh this year. We hope to um, improve on our on our placing the next time around. We we um we are going back to the drawing board. We're going to dissect what happened, what went wrong, what went right, and our Hilarion sisters have really been uh, a tremendous support to us. Thank you, Miss Martin, and I really want to say congratulations to you all on reaching the finals and. Of course, we we are the American voice. We have to support our schools. Um, so congratulations to Bishop Hans High for not only taking part, but taking the initiative as we continue to create new inroads for our girls and becoming women of tomorrow. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much.
All right, so we take a very short break at this point in time. As we come back, we will be chatting with representatives from Hoover Anglican Primary School. Cyprian, we got a. I feel as though I could go and learn to play pan right now. You know? These people have me fired up at this moment. And these, I mean, and here what we're going to a school that is dear to my heart because my niece is a, is a student of Kuva American Primary School. So I give a special shout out to you guys. Um, so I just want to say that, hey, you guys are doing a great job and look forward. Cyprian? Yes, and I must say, yeah, and I must say, you know, the Steve Pan has been embedded in our culture, in our hearts for years. Yes. And it's only when carnival time sometimes comes around is when we, we kind of reactivate that yes. feeling of, of, um, of that <clears throat> pride and joy of being our own independent, you know, our, we are our own nation with our culture, yes. with our own national yes. instrument that we enjoy. Right from from schools to you know um the from pioneers across the country, and you know it really brings me joy and happiness as a young person to really see that the art form continues to evolve, especially yes. from the primary school level to you know adulthood. So yes, yes, and I would like to so this opportunity I'd like to take to introduce our representatives from Kuva Anglican Primary School in Kuva. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Ms. Asha Alexis. Good evening to you, Ms. Alexis. Hi, good evening, and thank you for having us. God bless you. Thank you for saying yes. And I'd also like to say good evening to Mr. Jerris Keats, also a teacher at Coover Anglican Primary School. Good evening to you, sir. Hi, good evening to everybody else. 
So I don't know who are answering questions first, all right? But I I think we should go with the ladies first. <laughs> Miss Asha, right. Asha, can I call you Asha? Yes, you can. Great. So Asha, quick question, right? How hard is it to start teaching Han to primary school children? You're talking about children five, six years old. How hard is it to introduce them to Pan? Far less for competitions. Well, the thing about our school, the nature of our school is one which involves a lot of music because we sing in our assembly, we sing um all throughout the day, we sing whilst we're teaching. So most of the children, they enjoy that part of school life. So in terms of incorporating the pan and music with it is is just we look for those who had the passion who were, who were willing to learn and that's how i i wouldn't say it was difficult to get them interested the difficult part would have been teach actually teaching them the notes of the pan the types of pan you know and the melody and those things but getting their interest that was the easiest part of it all wow yeah, I, that's 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 actually that sounds so easy, yeah, but I know the challenge we have with with, with um with primary school kids, but you know, with the, in, in today's world, you see how fast and how quickly young persons adapt to you know many things from technology to to how you speak. So my question um to Mister Skeet is you know um how well share with us how Cuba and Lukum, um you know, the process and how they came up this year with their their, their piece and um what was the what what how did um the, the students how did they take what they, was it what were their views and those things we could share just just briefly. Okay, good night again. Uh well the music was chosen by David Sylvester, our arranger. Uh, he's the one who normally chooses what um music the piece that we're going to play, and we come to the school at a lunchtime, every, every lunchtime, and we teach the children um, the different parts of the song. Right? And uh, Mr. Padmore, the principal, he would have asked me to, to help to support Mr. Um, Sylvester by staying in, in the music room and ensuring that the children. Um, behave themselves and so on. Um, I, I was truly amazed how quickly the children um, learned the song within a couple of weeks. They were able to play the different notes and so on. And so the music is chosen by Mr. Sylvester. And he, Asha, who is the musical director, she is the one who has the music talent to so support. So it's, um, it's a a group effort. Mr. Padmo and I will be there on our lunch. And if you if you can make it, I'll I'll sit in just to support Mr. Sylvester and so I like so, uh, sorry, sorry. Continue. Yeah. Continue. So Mr. Sylvester, um I think the, the, the group started in at night, I think it was twenty fifteen or around then, where Mr. Sylvester was a, a bronze man at the school. And we uh, we had fans that were there um, from the Pan in Schools Initiative, and that had stopped for a couple of years when government changed. And he um, said that you know um, why have fans in the school and the children don't play. So he asked for a couple, he asked for students to come in and I lunch them, and that's how it started. Um, I sent my class, they were standard three, and it was just around Christmas, just, just the Christmas um, term, and by the New Year, they were all set to go and participate, which they qualified for that, that year, 2015, for the Panorama Finals. I think we came six that year. Out of that like, number of 12 or 15 bands uh, around. So, 
Mm-hmm. And I, I like the fact that you mentioned Seamuk because can you explain to me, well, Asha, you could probably chat, you could probably take this question. I know people, I know there's the expression teamwork makes the dream work. Share how that aspect fits in with getting these young children, these young minds ready for a panorama for um competition. Okay. Well, first we have to um we had to make sure we mesh the children together because they were from varying classes. We had some, there's a couple standard ones. We had a lot from standard two. Um, we had some standard threes and one, sta- one or two standard fours and the rest of them were from Mr. Skeet and my class, which is standard fives, who are now preparing for <laughs> SEA, right? So firstly, when we saw the children, the little ones were there. We, we didn't have the big ones as yet. The little ones were there and they're playing and they're learning the song. And uh, Mr. Sylvester keeps saying, you know, he needed some stronger ones to help group the, the students. So he, um, my son was one of the younger ones. So I was there first as just a parent looking on. And then I said, okay, sir, let me tap into my teaching hat now because I have students who I know could play. So I went, I talked to certain teachers and they decided, okay, we will let them out. We will let them come and practice and learn the song. So what really helps make our school work is our teachers. They come together. You see, when it's that, that time comes to jamming, you see the teachers coming out and putting in their best effort to make sure that these children know that they are supported, right? Teachers were there with us. Um, on the morning of Panorama, they're there, they're calling, they're making sure we had everything that we needed, you know, so it's all from, we we have to sh- we show the children that from where what you see going on with your teachers is what we want going on in the pan room, and it was so simple, the big ones, you saw them leading the younger ones, and you know, so everything worked so well, um, making sure that the children, them felt comfortable felt part of a family felt like you know this is not just pan class but this is the pan group the pan family and that is what kind of helped the cohesiveness in how they were able to get along quickly and you know so it's a really really a team effort from the security go go forward the security they make hello you're not in pan go on to this go on to the um pan room you know all of that is what helps make um makes our band successful. Everybody puts some part into making sure we work together. Oh, that's amazing to hear. Teamwork really makes it dream work. And, um, you know, I must commend parents, the students, the teachers, everybody actually um, allowing themselves to to work with one another to just um, achieve that common goal, which is to just enjoy themselves and be successful. So my question is, um, outside of the pan room, right, what benefits have you all noticed? It could be either one of you. Um, what benefits have you all noticed uh, that students would have gotten um, outside of the pan room, you know? From playing pan, they would have excelled in something. Maybe you could share some things. Okay, well, from my class um, classroom point of view, most of my pan students... Uh, they displayed a lot more responsibility in knowing that they had to go to Pan, learn the music, and still come back and complete all the work that we were doing in class because work didn't stop. Work kept on going. So Sir and I, as he said, we would take turns, more so going into the Pan room to make sure that, uh, you know, they were okay and they were doing what they're supposed to do. So um, work didn't stop, and I saw those children um display a lot more responsibility in making sure that they got the work they did what they were supposed to um for the younger ones i will tell you it brought out a sense of um how to put this they they were so they 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 got i would say pan matured them a bit because they would be the little voices you wouldn't hear or you wouldn't see and now when you walk around they walk around with such poise because they're so proud to have been there you hear them saying we play in front of thousands of people you know we're brave you know so those those are the things that 
make me happy in seeing these children get all of that from just being part of this band and being part of the competition and all of that. It helped to mature them a lot and help to get them ready for the world to know that you know you can be part of a team. You could do this. You could you could achieve so much greater than just being in a classroom there's so much outside of that that you could be a part of and you could make it work so that is what i think most of your children got they would they it matured them a bit and give them a, that responsibility and you know that poise and things so yeah thank you um, well, I'm, Gerald, I'm same question being thrown to you yeah this the drilling that they had to do to learn the song I told them they could use that in their schoolwork, that practice, that every day as they be there at the, the um, work, doing over the same thing over and over again. I said in your in your preparation for the essay exam, there's a lot of practice that you need to put in, a lot of dedication. So that they also they saw it in the music and also in their schoolwork. That they have to be drilling and practicing every day and we need to take over and over to get it right and to excel. So that's that's one thing that they learn. And they can see that it to be an excellent sportsman or musician, you need to practice it at, and keep at it all the time. Thank you. Cyprian, you know I hear a lot from all these schools so far. I hear in in my mind, I hear in discipline, I hear in commitment, I hear in passion, I hear in school pride. But I have one question to ask um, before, and I may ask it again later on um, with Bishop Sansi Trinity College. So when we chat with, um, with, that, with that panel, how does the church fit in relation to the school operation with PAN and all these developments um, because I don't know what the relationship is with the school, with the church directly, but um, do you think it would be an opportunity for them to be able to play in a church service and to share in a church service to be able to be a part of it? Would you all be, is this something that you all will be willing to do with Hoover Anglican um, Church? Which is the parish church there, which is a stone throwaway. Well, this is done it because we, um, Mr. Sylvester, plays in the church on a Sunday. His grandchildren also play the band in the church. The, the, we also have members of the band. The church requests us to play or to entertain. We are, we are always here. So it is done. We, we the church and our school um, band. There's a, a link, and we all we play on Sundays, especially when we have youth, youth Sundays, which we are and I involved. Great. As well as for harvest, we um we usually go on along with the whatever harvest team they have, and we try to find a song that we can play to entertain at that time. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thanks to you all. I mean, I know I know Hoover is, as I said, my sister lives in the area. Hoover Anglican Church is, a, is very close to my heart. I have some wonderful friends from there. And as I said, my niece also attends Hoover Anglican Primary School. So I know you all have me feeling an ask the question, why, is she, why isn't she in Pan? Um, but maybe another time we can chat more on that off air and see how we can get involved and see if this can also be one of the passions for her. So thank you very much um, very for sharing and for being a part of this evening's program. And once again, congratulations on reaching the finals in the primary school panorama competition this year. Thank you very much for having us, Mr. Haynes and Mr. Rantz. Thank, thank you very you. much. God bless you. So as we wrap up this segment, not to program, we ask you to hold on for the short break as we come right back.
And we are back for those of you who are listening. We are we are on the Anglican Voice, a program brought to you by the Incorporated Trustees of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. Today, I am Reverend Mark Haynes, and I'm joined by my good friend Cyprian Ransom as we chat with champions in Pan. Champions, yes, indeed. Champions uh-huh. in Pan. Um, you know, all the, our Anglican schools, and we are celebrating their successes as who have reached the finals and all these things. Cyprian. You want me to tell you something here now? Yeah, go ahead. The persons we are about to speak to, this school, Bishop and the Trinity College East. Firstly, they fall within the parish of St. Mary, aware which I am a deacon. I am also, I don't want to say, I'm also very involved in, you know, the works of the school and all the activities. Um, I haven't been to the panels yet, I'm just saying. But I'll be there soon, hopefully, next year, please go to Junior. But um, I like to say I really am impressed with the work that this school does, Bishop Anthony Trinity Colleges. Um, I'd like to introduce the panel. We have Miss Tanya Hart. We have um, Sydney Nichols, correct? Do you pronounce it correct? Yeah, yes, you have. Yes, Miss Sydney Nichols. And we have Elon Thomas, is that correct? Yes, it is. Great. So we have the three of you all here. Now, I normally do ladies first, but we have one gentleman, two ladies tonight representing this panel. So I'm shooting my question to my dear brother, Aaron, first. Tell me, Bishop Anstey Trinity College East and 6-4, three schools, one team to represent for Panorama. How was this experience for you? Well, good night to the panel and to the host. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, firstly. But being the band's captain, I'd like to say that this experience was unique to me as it brought me a different type of responsibility. I, I felt challenged while I enjoyed the experience as I had to put out a certain high level of dedication and energy towards the process. Being champions before, as you should know we are from 2020, we had to work hard to retain that reputation, that standard that we already set. And I feel like with the assistance of the parents, the team, Miss Hart herself, the person who has given me this opportunity as well, I would say we put a lot of effort into it and this experience was amazing for me. You are a student still, correct? Yes, I am still a student at BATC 6 form, doing upper wow. six. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. It's good to hear a young man not only be able to be talented to lead his team to third place, correct? Yeah, third place. Not only to lead his team to third place, but you are very articulate. You have a future in public relations. If you're interested, you're looking voices. We are looking for people like you. Just say it. Just straight out that public announcement one time. All right, but um, going quickly along, um, Ms. Hart, you were just mentioned there. How does this mentorship work to encourage these young minds, especially apart from the academics, but in competitions such as this? Good evening once again. Welcome to everyone. It's uh, a joy, a passion. It's something that I don't really see as a job or a task is perhaps a calling one could say, I don't know. But it I see it as just as it's important to groom the future. I'm very passionate about investing in the youth, investing in the students at Trinity College East, investing in students of Bishop and High School East, and of course sixth one. The intention with the players actually they nominate and vote on the captain and vice captain. So they would have you know had their own deliberations and he would have had to defend and speak why it is he should be elected as captain. So he's articulate a long time. <laughs> so he would have to give him a speech why it is he should have, why he should be in charge of the band. And his peers saw him as a leader, which he actually is. And so is Miss Nichols, <laughs> excellent leaders. And they would have did exactly what was required for the season. And I'm proud of both of them. So we have now Elon. As I said, you're very proud of you, and, and mentorship is crucial in our discussions and everything that we do. Because 
having that balance is extremely, extremely important. Ms. Sydney, tell us about your contribution. What is it? What is your role on the team and how have you been able to leave an indelible mark on these young minds that we have here within the within the pan side and otherwise with this music? Tonight to the host on the panel, my position in the panel is vice captain. And just like Elon, I was nominated and voted for for that position. And my contribution to the band, well, I had to help with organizational stuff, making sure that everybody made it to the pioneer safely. Um, I had to ensure that players had the notes, that they were playing it correctly. When it was time for stuff like giving out meals, I would go around and I would ask around and I would ask if they got their meals, if everyone got fed. And it was a bit tough at first because even though I was um, captain in my primary school, it was still new-ish to me and I found it quite hard at some time, but I was still really happy to be able to lead my school in a way that was like effective and I was very happy that I was there with them when they came third and I saw all the work that they put in and it was a joy to me knowing that I helped to contribute to some of that work. And... Um, yeah, that was, that's basically it. So, they tell us about yourself. You're, you're starting one of these students. So, what are you doing? Sixth form? I'm actually in form five. Form five? So, you're preparing for for exams right now? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, I wish you the best in the exams. I mean, how has... So, I, I, you just make me ask your next hard question, right? Has this journey prepared you as you are leading into exams right now? I think it has made me more confident in myself and that I should know to trust my abilities. Like, I know what I could do and I know that I could do this and that and I just have to believe that I could do that. Instead of being, you know, a bit scared, I should just do it confidently. I should just go into it instead of being wary and stuff. So I think that this experience has helped to bring out that confidence in me. All right. Well, from here, in from, um, from you both, my question is for um, Elon and um, Sydney. Um, you know, what age did you all start playing pan? Because I you know here, um, we have persons from primary school playing pan, and you guys are at the end of your secondary school. Well, coming to the end of your secondary school, um, yeah. So, but tell us, share with us, what age did you all start? Well, ladies first. So, um, well, I actually started playing pan when I was about eight years old. My primary school, Waiko Presbyterian. Um, I started off in the steel orchestra as well. So since then, I've been playing band all the time. Oh, well, I began playing band at the age of four and a half um, in a music school where I was told by Patricia Joseph. Um, I spent uh, many of my younger years doing exams at UE for music levels or Trinity-based exams, which is situated in England. Um, I uh, spent those years culminating skills that I'm glad to say I got to use in my experiences from Form 1 through to Form 6. Excellent. So this question is to Ms. Hart. Um, you know, as a teacher, uh, how have you seen the art form of, you know, steel pan? Uh, have you seen it evolve? Um, what things have you seen change over the years, um, especially at um, the and Trinity East? Can you share with us? Not a problem. The art form definitely has grown tremendously. I think Pan is one of the heavier clubs associated with this school, the Steve Pan Club. We have many things we do um, dance, choir, archery, football. Uh, hmm, the list is too long <laughs> to mention. But Pan in particular, I think coming out of the pandemic, having those two year groups who didn't have their physical school. They, the we were oversubscribed. We had too many students that wanted to do pan, and it was a challenge to the point I know I had to create an additional day to create to have pan. I normally have pan um, four times for the week. We had to create a fifth day, and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> and actually, the vice captain Sydney she suggested, "Well, miss, if it is we break up one session, we begin a session into two classes, a three to four and a four to five because I didn't know how to make all the students fit. We were oversubscribed, people were sharing pans and refused to not do anything else. They really wanted to do pan. And to see that level of passion and enthusiasm for our national instrument is heartwarming. 
to see a child who might not have been interested in music altogether as in the classroom and to see them at the instrument and all of a sudden their eyes light up, their ears all perked and there's a complete mood change. And even some of the students who, you know, we, we, we may have students who are going through a bit of a hard time through their household and they find it hard to come to school. To hear a student say, Miss, I only come to school because of Panama. It's very heartwarming. And of course, you have to encourage them that you need to come to school for all classes. But you know, it's a start to get them to get them motivated to do other things. And from that um, point of interest, getting them to do well other subjects, you know, encouraging them to apply the same extra efforts when they want to get a part really good and they always try to find me in a lunchtime to practice because I can't get these. They, you know, they want to put in an extra effort. They want to sound better. It's that same thing as Mr. Skeet mentioned, you know, that enthusiasm for them wanting to do better, channel it into their school. You know, and even some of my home fives in particular, the four and five boys, they were having difficulties completing SBAs. And it's only until I put them on the sidelines, told them how they may not play the panorama. That is when I saw a complete fire. <laughs> it's like, they, like they, they, they're in their final year and because the behind the SBAs couldn't complete work. Ooh, I haven't seen such productivity in a long time. <laughs> but it was it was a, a motivational tool. And we I have seen the growth and it will continue to grow. And we need a bigger panel. <laughs> so is that a request for a sponsor to um, assist in yes, 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 yes. You know, is that an appeal <laughs> that we are making out there that Trinidad and Tobago to our third place um winners, our third place champions this year, you know, in order to have them, they need a bigger pan room, just asking. You know? Bigger pan room, more pans, you know, yes. just lots of support, lots of support for the youth. Yes, and um, I really love that that line, lots of support for the youth, because it reminds me now, in that aspect of support for the youth, we have to look at growth for the youth. So, and this is a question I didn't get a chance to ask the other teams, but once time allows, we should be able to, I'll try to see if we can. We have about, we have just under, just about two minutes again in the program. We, how has technology assisted you in terms of developing a team, such a, a powerful team, such as what you have been able to do? Well, technology has existed in a, in a, amazing way because our arranger he's actually an alumni of Trinity Ecologist. He started arranging at Form 3 within the school uh, for the after school plan science, starting off there and you know introducing him to Sibelius notational software. So he already had a strong sense of music and playing, naturally gifted. So I encouraged him to begin arranging. So teaching him how to use the software and having it available at the school and the computers. So he got the first opportunity to arrange in for Panorama for 2019. So he played full of vibe and he came fourth. And in 2020, same student arranger, he was in point, city point in time and to win Panorama, him alongside another past student, Jonathan Watson. So, you know, this alumni, they worked together. I saw them doing WhatsApp calls. Oh, this is before, this is pre-pandemic. So there wasn't, Zoom wasn't a big thing back then. So pre-pandemic, they were doing WhatsApp calls, sharing information or sending different files of what they, what they think should be added into the song. So they didn't, they didn't always have to meet face-to-face -to, -face to share their ideas. Technology was a beautiful thing. And now in 2023, with um, Anthony decided to arrange by himself because Jonathan wanted to be more plain. He's more of a performer. So he wanted to get a range of a bit of a uh, hiatus for now. So Anthony is currently in his second year at Berkeley in um, the States. So he would have been sending scores to me and, you know, <laughs> been teaching me music. So technology is a, a beautiful thing. And also what we, what I plan to do as well, many students have that level of, of competency in terms of reading music, but to get them more, a little more active in that reading role, like the captain and vice captain, they're quite proficient. In terms of reading music, I could give them the score and they would take their time and distribute music. But technology is a beautiful thing and it has been so beneficial as I think it was Miss Martin from Bishop Forestine who made a comment and saying, you know, into the structure, having this score beforehand as opposed to someone coming into the pan yard and working on well, in air quotes vibes to get a song to come together. That's wasting time with the very limited time we had the panorama. 
technology is beautiful <laughs> again. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Hart, for sharing. And at this time, I'd like to, you know, really thank everyone. So we start with Bishops Anstey and Trinity College East. We thank Ms. Um, Tanya Hart, uh, Ms. Sydney Nichols, we thank Mr. Elon Thomas from the Coover and Lutcan Primary School. We thank Mr. Gerald Skeet and Ms. Asha Alexis. And lastly, but not, last but not least, from Bishops Anstey in Port of Spain, we thank Mr. Mara Martin. And we ask you, view we ask you listeners to support each and every Anglican school that is present here and present in our lovely Twin Island Republic. Support them with your finances, with helping them with new plans. Support them with giving them encouragement as um you know as the years go by. With pan with the culture that they they try to teach and also integrate into the young person's mind. We ask for your moral and your prayers as well. Just help our Anglican schools to grow and elevate into something that is more than we envision. So at this time, I just want to give God the thanks and praise for having our wonderful guest share with us tonight. And I hope they themselves also enjoyed and learned something from each other um, in each of the different schools. And I, I would like to, to call everyone winners, everyone winners, despite whatever you placed, you're all winners in my heart and you're all winners in God's eyes. So you will continue to elevate yourselves in everything that you do. And all the best in your exams to Elon and um and Sydney, right? Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be part of this panel of discussion. And Mark, I hand it over back to you. Thank you. I endorse everything that Cyprian just said, and it really was a pleasure. So it is my pleasure as we close to ask God to bless each and one of you as you continue to work to make Trinidad and Tobago a better place tomorrow and the years to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the representatives here tonight. We thank you, dear God, for each thing that they would have done to change the lives of many persons around them, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord, we place them into your hands. Not only them, dear God, but all of those persons who use music to positively influence our society, dear God. We lift them up to you. We thank you, dear God. We pray, dear God, for our young persons. We pray that you'll continue to be successful not only in exams, not only in the academics, but in all aspects of life. I ask a special prayer this night, dear God, for Elon and Sydney, for as they continue, they stepped out to make a difference, even though they are preparing for their own exams. So I pray your blessings upon them. I pray that you'll guide them as they prepare for exams. I pray for their success in exams. And I pray, the Lord, that you'll continue to use them to be men, a man, and a woman of tomorrow to a sheep, positively, the music of this land. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to say thank you to everybody and invite you all to tune in next week, God's willing, for another episode of the Anglican Voice on I-95.5 FM. We are here every Sunday evening from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on I-95.5 FM, as well as on the Anglican Outlook YouTube channel, as well as the, the Anglican Outlook TV YouTube on YouTube, as well as the Anglican Outlook. Next week, please, God, continue our discussion on the church and carnival. So tune in for that exciting topic. God bless you and thank you. God bless you and have a wonderful season and be safe and don't forget, Jesus loves you. Amen.